Oh no. Oh please no. Oh please no. Please no, please no, please, please, no, 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 no. Ah I can do this. I can do this. Okay. Hi everybody, thank you so much for joining me for this Let's Experience Amnesia. Uh, I'm gonna be playing the original, The Dark Descent. So I'm playing this because Halloween is just around the corner. There is literally no better time in the year to play a horror game. And I also wanted to revisit this topic of how horror games can actually, in a way, be good for us, good for our psychology, if you play them mindfully. However, I'm saying that as somebody who only plays them sparingly, uh, but I did really want to cover a horror game. Why not this classic one? This one that I, I did play many, many years ago when it first came out, uh, when I was a different person and I think I could handle it better, uh, but more on that later. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started. First, I wanted to, oh gosh, I'm already scared. <laughs> Uh, I guess let's just assess my mood before going into this. As you know, with these Let's Experience, okay, auto saving things, with these Let's Experience playthroughs, it's all about trying to figure out how does a game change my mood, or not my mood, but the player's mood? How does it affect our psychology? How can we use it as mindful players to really work for us? Welcome to Amnesia the Dark Descent. What follows is a couple of quick messages about how to get the best possible experience. Uh, don't try to win. Okay. Uh, focus on immersing yourself. I, I remember that message actually that really freaked me out when I first started. So before I, moving on, uh, just to assess my mood right now, um, I had a stressful day. I think I, I've started too many of these videos saying that I've had a stressful day at work. It's just how life is sometimes and that's okay. Um, I would say that typically with a mood like this, I want to engage with something hedonic. I want a, a distraction from my stress. This is a very different kind of distraction from my stress. In fact, I'll be putting myself into more stress, but I'm hoping that it's going to, if I use it well, if I play this mindfully, if I play well, this, I can make this work for me psychologically and help boost my mood and sense of well-being. But we'll see just how effective I am at that because I am actually really out of practice with horror games and how to play them in an effective way. Uh, but I'll go more into like, how do you play a horror game effectively to get the most out of it psychologically? I, I will get into that in a little bit. Okay, so the levels of this game. Uh, when I say the levels of this game, I'm talking about the mood management theory levels. I'm gonna just play this normal if you'll excuse me. I'm not like a pro. Uh, movement selection, okay. Uh, so the levels are, if you've seen my last video on Stardew Valley or my video on Animal Crossing, very different games from this, uh, there are these four levels that really determine how a piece of media changes our, oh, don't forget. Don't forget. Some things must be forgotten. Oh, I can actually. Well, as Daniel, I think his name's Daniel, right? I can't quite remember. As he talks, um, these four levels are excitatory potential. This game is gonna be really high in that. It's all about how exciting this game is, how much of a intense emotional reaction can it get out of us. That's a very high level right there. Uh, that is the essence of horror. Uh, absorption potential is the next level. The absorption of this game is gonna be very high. As they said, like many times, it's all about immersing yourself in the world. Absorption is how how quickly a piece of media can take you from your last mood before engaging with it and bring you into a new one. I'm going to be brought into a very different mood very quickly. I am predicting that now. Uh, the next one is semantic affinity. How how closely does this reflect my everyday life? Uh, not very well. I, I don't have amnesia. I'm not waking up on a daily basis in an abandoned uh, castle or abandoned really. Oh. Okay, I'm suddenly scared. My hand. Hello? Mementos. Okay, apparently I don't remember what's what. Let's look at my notes. No notes! Wait, mementos. Follow the liquid. Okay, that's pleasant. I enjoy that. Okay, oh god. Okay, so I'm playing this at night, everything is dark. Uh, Halloween is just around the corner. I'm feeling like thumps from my neighbors downstairs. I am scared. Uh, but continuing where I left off, semantic affinity. I, uh, this isn't my real life. Oh, I don't like the darkness, I think. Um, this isn't my real life. I'm not always doing this kind of stuff, so it's very different. So that's very low semantic affinity 
scoring right there. Last one is Hedonic Valence. Horror, uh, horror games are, oh god, somebody, something just thunked behind me and, uh, oh god, is this in the game? Was that in the game? I'm so scared. I haven't even seen or done anything yet. What am I doing with myself? Okay, I am, I'm just tripping over myself. Oh, I'm tripping. Okay, oh, oh, uh, okay. Hedonic Valence. Uh, as horror games are, they're not very... Oof. Tinderbox. Uh, they're not very... Hello? Oh. Okay, I, th these controls are gonna be... I've never played this on a Switch. I played this PC in the first time. Um, again, I heard something. Uh, hedonic valence is gonna be very low because this is horror. Hedonic valence is all about how cheery a game is. This is the exact opposite. Horror games do not want to be cheery, not necessarily. I mean, sometimes, I guess, uh, a little bit of cheeriness, like maybe Baldi, if that, is that the name of that? Baldi's educational something something. Um, that was a little cheery, kind of, like strange, maybe, I don't know. There were some cheery games, cheery horror games, but... Um, it's a very weird mixture that isn't really cheery in the end. Hello? Okay. Uh, I, I cannot walk. Oh, goodness. Okay, so, those are the levels for this game. With those kinds of levels, with low semantic affinity, it's good for someone if you're trying to get away from your everyday life, which, yeah, that, that sounds about right for me right now because of the stress in my life. Uh, good for dis dis distraction with the, with the high absorption levels and with the high excitement. I'm not liking this. I'm not liking this. Okay, but moving on. So talking about what we can do. Oh my goodness. Horror games. You know what? You know what? You know what? This isn't. This is not pleasant. I am. Oh no. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Was that normal? Was that expected? How do I run? I can't remember what happens in this game. Okay, yes, I will walk into this random room. Um, okay. Whew. Horror game, beware. When standing in the darkness, your sanity will slowly drain. I remember how, how cool it was to have a sanity meter, kind of. But, like, not an actual HUD. Not an HUD. You, didn't, you don't see your sanity go down. You just start to hear, like, sounds and things would, like, go wonky. Um, though, I mean, honestly, the, the term sanity meter, like, okay, that's a little bit much. Maybe maybe fear meter or something? I don't know. Um, old archive. Hello. Okay, that's a button. Old archives. Okay. Um, so horror games give us effective and cognitive challenges. Effective with an A um, means emotional challenges. We are, I, we are being challenged emotionally. I am being challenged emotionally. I still don't know how to run. Did I skip that little tutorial? Did I go right past it? I am terrified. How do you, how do you... Okay. Witnessing unsettling events. Okay, complete... Oh. It can be increased by completing puzzles and making progress. See right there. Even within the game. Completing puzzles gives you a sense of competence and mastery, which is actually a psychological resource proven by... Um, am I okay? Oh, okay. I just don't like... Okay, my... It's rumbling. It's rumbling. How do I... I don't like this. I can't remember when the first creature appears. This is deeply unsettling. Uh, it's difficult talking about research doing this. However, it is helping me. Um, I'm not getting as scared as I usually were, would. Uh, I'm actually... Okay. Let's go backwards. Okay, okay, okay. I get it. I get it. Scary wind, scary wind. Scary wind. I'm just gonna walk in it. I'm just gonna walk in it. It's just wind. Okay. Um. Ugh. Okay. When holding an object, press L, bumper to throw it. And then I can rotate it like this. Wee. Okay. Boop. Um. Excuse me? Ex oh! Yes, I love you. Come to me. I need you for the rest of my life. Picked up a lantern. Now how do I equip that? Anyways, I'm getting so distracted. Um, we are being challenged emotionally, effectively, and cognitively, uh, which is good in, in many ways, uh, honestly. I mean, 
who doesn't like a good challenge? Challenges always lead to increased skills, you know, increased effective skills, emotional skills, increased cognitive skills, you know, with these challenges. However, they can be a bit much, which is why people who are high in sensation seeking or high in psychological openness, or if you were to talk about the big five personality traits, openness, um, you might have heard of those before. If not, I'll put something at the bottom of the screen. Uh, openness is being open to new experiences, usually uh, challenging experiences, like walking through this creepy doorway that I really don't want to do because actually, guess what, everyone? I am low in sensation seeking. I am low in openness when it comes to this kind of emotional challenge. This is not what I naturally go towards. <gasps> yes. Uh, boink. Yes. I'm just going to stay by this fire for a second while I think about my thoughts. Um, I'm actually really low, not really low, I'm pretty low in sensation seeking. Sensation seekers are the one who, ones who are usually the, the, the horror fans. They love uh, the new, I'm just gonna look at this nice light. Uh, they're the ones who really appreciate being scared. They like those challenges. It makes them feel good. Um, because once they get over those negative feelings, they feel stronger for it and they appreciate that feeling of feeling stronger. Okay, um, I'm actually pretty low in that. I don't go seeking sensations. I don't go on... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I don't go on roller coasters. I don't mess with nothing. I don't go on zip lines. I don't do... Oh, what the heck? Okay, I don't do things that give me fear for no reason. Not usually, because uh, if we're talking about the five big factors of personality, I'm actually a little bit high, I think, in neuroticism. I am uh, on the anxious side, uh, which is why I have such an interest in mental health. Um, you know, just to give you my whole life story. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so that's the particular thing here is that I'm not the typical audience for this. I do appreciate it though. I remember loving this game when it first came out. Like I said before, uh, how I want to talk about this. You can actually change in how you relate to media because, you know, we all grow into different kinds of people. I used to be higher in sensation seeking, higher in openness. Do I really? I don't want to waste my thing on that. Um, excuse me. Ex Excuse me? Okay. I'm not... Okay. I used... Oh, oil. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. To add more to the oil, pl uh, wait. Can I just not? Can I? Is There should always be an option in horror games to just be like, no, thank you. I'm gonna leave. And... You don't get any sense of mastery from that. You don't get any challenge. You just wasted your money because you played to wake up in a building and walk out. But you know what? That's the kind of person I am. I would just be like, no, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. So my challenge to myself with this game, with playing a horror game, is to focus on, and I haven't mentioned this, you might have seen, uh, and I might have already put it in here somewhere, like the little card or something, uh, my previous video about how horror games help us um, in a way that, you know, how they affect our, how, how, what we can get out of them is what I meant, mindful with mindful playing. Um, I didn't mention this in that video. Am I backtracking the way I should be? Bruh, okay, 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 creepy win. Um, I didn't mention this because I, I didn't have that much knowledge about it, but I have been doing research. Oop. Okay. Was this okay? Is there gonna be a monster here? Okay. I have been doing research. <gasps> okay. <laughs> about antecedent focused emotion regulation, which is a mouthful. Uh, but when you are confronted by something that is scary, you can either focus uh, in order to regulate your emotions, because we all just naturally regulate our emotions. We don't, I mean, we want to at least. Um, we don't typically, uh, this just made everything worse. Oh my goodness, no. We don't typically spend our time uh, in a state, do I, am I going the right way? You know what? I 
don't know if I'm going the right way. Oh, okay, I found what I'm supposed to do. Welcome back. I am I have discovered what I'm doing with my life. Okay, okay. Okay, so uh, when you're confronted by something that is scary, you can either, or disgusting, or something that you don't want to feel, you can either focus on antecedent focused emotion regulation or response focused emotion regulation, which is just to say antecedent. Bro, okay, what was that noise? Okay, antecedent, it's all about focusing on reappraisal, you know, reappraising, okay, what is this situation? Is it really scary? Do I actually have to feel these things? It's about rationalizing, reasoning out. Okay, I thought I saw something, oh God, okay. Um, reasoning out um, in your mind why you don't need to be scared in this. Don't tell me how to run. Don't tell me how to run right now. That's not what I need in my life right now. That's not. Okay. See, antecedent. Let's practice antecedent emotion regulation. Um, this isn't scary. It's, it's, I'm playing a game. Uh, okay. Alexander, is it inside the castle? In a manner of speaking. Oh my goodness. Bring the I'm, I'm in a castle. I mean, I'm not in a castle. I'm in my room. I'm, <laughs> I'm playing a game. And it's... You know, it's not that scary. This came out in 2010, which, I mean, doesn't mean it's not scary anymore. Oh god, what was that? Something thunked behind me. Oh god. As you can see, I'm scared because I can't handle these things very well. Okay. Um, okay, that's my cat. I just heard my cat. He's meowing. He's upset at me. See, that's funny. You know, he's upset at me because I'm not giving him the attention that he wants. Where am I supposed to go? Was I supposed to listen? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, antecedent focus is all... Uh, okay. Excuse me. Do I need to go down here? Do I need to help someone? Okay, that's my cat. Laboratory. Do I need to do that? Oh. Oh, no. Do I need... Oh, thank God. Okay, you know what? No, no, that's good. I don't need a key. No, thank you. What about the laboratory? Okay, I'm just gonna go in there. I don't know if I need to go in there because I'm just talking. Um, so, antecedent focus is all about reappraising the situation and thinking about it logically, making sure that you know to yourself, you understand, you know to yourself, you know that you don't need to be scared. I don't need to be having these fight or flight responses. I am safe. I am safe. This is a very well made game. Uh, and the developers should be proud of themselves and they deserve everything. Um, they put a lot of time and heart and soul and and sweat and tears into making this and I completely appreciate that. Okay. 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 I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Is there already a monster out here? I have no idea. My, my heart is beaten. Okay, so instead of focusing on response, I, I the response-focused um, emotion regulation, which is actually like we try to do that more often. We'd, we try not to seem scared. We try not to feel scared. You know what? You know what? I'm just gonna... I, only, I know I only have four. Okay, uh, we try not to seem scared. We try to keep our breath even. That's uh, that's focusing on the response. That's focusing on the response of being scared, keeping your breath even, trying not to scream, trying not trying not to express, trying not to make it clear on your face. But you know what? Research actually found that when you try. Okay, that's the ice cream truck outside. If you can hear that, that's the ice cream truck outside. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Okay, okay. There's light in here. I like light. Okay, I am, I'm, s oh no you don't, 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 no, no. Tinderbox, give me a tinderbox. I don't know if I'm actually able to hide here. Is somebody, is, is there something like in here? Oh, I can't open anything. I'm so fidgety. This is my response, but you know what? I'm not gonna focus on my response. I'm not gonna, oh, <laughs> I'm not gonna 
you try to appear less scared because that's not what's important. What's important is understanding the antecedent focus of this. Okay, let's read. It's time to read. Okay, I'm safe while I read. So I'm actually feeling pretty okay because if I was playing this actually by myself, home alone, uh, when everything's dark and it's close to Halloween. Halloween is my favorite holiday, by the way, but still, I that, that doesn't mean anything. I like the, the cute side of Halloween um, these days. I used to like horror games and horror movies more um, as a player, as somebody who could, could and would play them. However, my emotional resilience has gone down. Uh, emotional resilience is the... Okay, I'm going to close this. I don't want to just open while I'm trying to inspect um <laughs> emotional resilience is the feeling that you know i can experience negative emotions and i can be okay in the end it's okay you know i can come back from it oh so yes i used to have more emotional resilience i had more faith that after experiencing negative emotions that i could return to an emotional state that wasn't uh bad uh, not bad, but wasn't intense and suspenseful and scary. Uh, but I've had a couple struggles with anxiety in my life. You know, I went to grad school, which was a very, very uh, informative time in my life, very important time in my life, but it did give me some more anxiety. This is very nice. Just gonna stare at this painting. You know, this should, this should up my sanity meter looking at paintings, honestly. Um, anyways, and going through those bouts of anxiety, having a difficult time with that, uh, it, it, no, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, did I just run out of oil? Okay. Having, having, it did make me less emotionally resilient because that's just the, the okay, shirts. That's just the nature of anxiety. It, it made it so that I didn't have as much faith in myself that I could overcome negative emotions, which means my sensation seeking simply because I neglected practicing these muscles, practicing antecedent focused emotion regulation. I just avoided it altogether and I stayed a little bit too much with hedonic media. Uh, it's, it's important to get a balance of these things. Balance it out, challenge yourself, practice these things. Made it here so far. I've proven to myself that I can handle this, I can handle being scared, and I can come back from it. Hello! Hi! Okay! <sighs> okay. I, I am still scared. Uh, however, I have a newfound faith in myself. You know what? Right here. First uh, person, like, you know, reported source. Uh, playing this horror game has made me feel like more confident in myself and just as little as what I think this has been like two hours of gameplay total um, I do I feel better about myself even if I were to get caught right now and start running and screaming start running and screaming I'd be okay. I'd be okay because I know that it just takes time and patience and I can can I? That looks like it's interacting. Okay. Uh, it's like, let's just drink while I'm down here. Um, it takes time and patience and that I can overcome my kind of negative um, emotions and that I can build my emotional resilience. Wah, wah, wah. Sounds like dogs and stuff. Okay. Um, I can build my emotional resilience little by little. I can practice it like this. I can practice it. It's okay, doggy. Oh my goodness. That's intense. Ouch! Jeez. Okay, something's angry again. Something's angry. Should I be running? <laughs> Just gonna go to the cellar archives now. Oh, 
Oh. Hello. What's up? Oh no. Oh please no. Oh please no. Please no, please no, please, please, no, 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 no. Ah! Ah, okay. Uh, I was like, wait, I'm suddenly in water. I know exactly where I am. So all of my calmness, everything that I had in previous situation immediately went away. I mean, he knows I'm here. He knows I'm, or she, they, they know I'm here. I can use my lantern to just like relax for a second. Okay, so all of a sudden, high energy, high energy. How the heck do I get out of here? Hello, Mr. Invisible that can't somehow get me when I'm just not in water. The floor, whoop. Yes, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Go that way. I don't have anything for you. I don't have anything for you. Can I pick this up? No. Um, mm, I could try to get by and run to that crate over there. Anyways, so yeah. Uh, I am actually feeling okay. This is my first, like, one-on-one -on -one encounter with a monster. He's just chilling. He's just my new friend. You know, we just play this game of really aggressive tag and that's okay 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 I'm gonna sprint I'm gonna sprint and then I'm gonna jump oh, okay okay see that's all it takes yeah you don't like that I know but it's okay it's okay to lose sometimes oh, I shouldn't goad him um yeah okay can I like run and jump <gasps> No, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, you go back there, you go back there. We're okay, we're all good. It's okay, friend. It's okay. It's okay! I'll let you win next time. I'll let you win next time. Right? Right. What does that do? Is this a timer? Is this seriously a timer? I'm seriously supposed to run out of here? <laughs> Can I let the timer run out and try again? Because I didn't know that at first. I don't want to have to try this again, so I'm going to let it run out. Hello. Hello. Oh, growl. Ooh, somebody's very impatient. I'm not good at running. I'm not good at running, so this might end badly for me. But you know what? What I have learned from our little encounter, from our little rendezvous here, is that I feel good, you know. I've somehow been able to, with mindfulness, with media mindfulness, and knowing these types of... Okay, there we go. With knowing these types of, I guess, media psychology hacks, you know, focusing on antecedent, uh, emotion regulation, regulation emotion, blah, 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 blah. Knowing these things has really helped me. I came into this game, into this play session as somebody really squeamish, and yeah, I'm still going to be kind of squeamish. I'm still going to run and scream and probably not make it because I'm not that great at, at running and stuff like that. I'm more of a puzzler type of person. However, I consider this a victory. So whether or not, however this ends up, it's a victory. It's a victory. Oh, I ran right into you. Oh, I ran right into you. Oh, 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 oh. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. Oh my goodness. I don't know where I'm supposed to go. <gasps> oh, he got me. He got me. He got me. He got me. Oh. Oh, but there's another one in here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, and there's body parts. Body parts. Yummy. Yummy body parts. Do you want a snack? Okay. I am not doing so great on health. And I don't know where our next switch is. So, oh, and I'm wasting my lantern. What's over there? It looks like just some barrels. Okay, I'm gonna try and get by you. Oh, thank you, thank you, very kind, very kind. Did you leave this here for me? I'm so happy, I'm so happy, thank you. Oh, again, I always just want to press the jump button. Crouch and grab. I know, I know, it's upsetting. I know, I know. I know how you feel. But it's okay. Oh, I was supposed to... 
Let's get you one of your your treats. Oh, you're aggressive. You're more aggressive than our last friend. Or you're the same one and you got through. Was I supposed to find a way to time it just right? Okay, okay, okay. Ooh. Ooh, look at this. Ugh, look at this thing. Yeah. Boop. Haha. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm like gonna trip. Oh, I should have grabbed another body part. Ooh. Ooh, I know. I know you're upset. Oh, that's the sound of him eating. I getcha. I getcha. Wait, did I get- Oh, I- <gasps> Okay, how about a nice thing? This- this feels very wrong. Yeah? Wiggle, wiggle. Yeah? Take it! Come on up! Ooh, no! He was not fooled. He was smarter than I thought! Ah! Okay. You weren't fooled. You are very unhappy with me. You're like, you think you can just... Okay. Okay. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. He's coming back for me, isn't he? Oh, no. No, no, no. No, not like... No. Oh. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. I get it. 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 There you go. Go. Please go. Please go. Please go. Please go. <gasps> Ooh. <gasps> oh. Okay. I have to wait till you actually eat. Oh. Did you not? Oh, come on. This is my last limb. Huh. Okay. Uh. Boop. Go eat. Come on. No, come on, come on, come on. Oh, he's coming for me. He's coming for me. Ah! Oh. Oh, no. Okay. You know what? This is it. This is it. I'm too far from any other limbs to go get them. Right? I'm too far. Okay. I've done puzzled this wrong. I've done puzzled this wrong. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I don't have any laudanum. What's over here? What's over here? What's over here? Oh. I can actually see. Ah! Okay. Ooh. Oh, thank you very much. Dead flesh can act as a distraction. Okay. So, I know we we reached a thing there. Am I in the water? Did they do they populate? Oh, that's nice of them. They they're like, yeah, we'll give you here. Okay. So, I think I will call it at that. I've had my first encounter with a monster, but you know what? Even with that failure, even with dying, I feel stronger. I'm like, you know what? I was giving myself too little credit. I thought with my low emotional resilience that I couldn't handle something like this. That I couldn't handle actually confronting a monster in a video game. That I get too wrapped up in it and that I, I would feel bad and that bad mood would continue to affect me throughout the day or something, you know, that, that kind of short-sightedness of not realizing I can process negative emotions just fine, especially with the toolbox of knowing about antecedent emotion regulation and everything like that. Um, boop. Let's just, let's just distract him. Um, so, I, this is a, did he not care? Oh, he was already over there. Wow, I just brought him closer. Anyways, so I'm going to end it here. I think I've had enough fun playing with our, our little friend here. And I am just about at two hours. Um, and so it's important to know the balance know when to stop don't if you stay on this for too long then you will start seeing negative effects you know uh 
not only, I mean, research does show that with horror games, you actually get desensitized to violence, which might explain why it was so callous with these body parts, but it's, it's a detachment type of thing, you know, I, I have assessed that this isn't, you know, real life, that these aren't actual limbs, it's okay, but if you play too many horror games, research shows that you can be desensitized to violence, which I mean, you know, not necessarily a skill or a trait that you want to have, you want to remain sensitive to these types of things, not too sensitive, you know, that it causes anxiety, but you know, kind of in the middle, a balance, again, it's always about balance. Also, horror games can sometimes uh, perpetuate uh, negative stereotypes, but that's that's fine if if you don't. I mean, also horror games can perpetuate negative stereotypes, um, which doesn't mean you can't play all of them. But it does mean you know being mindful about your choices and and not buying into everything and not buying into everything that you see in a horror game because it's like I mean it's it's fiction. Uh, stay critical. Uh, and oh, I didn't know you were in right here. Wow. Okay. Anyways, thank you so much for joining me. I feel like this was a victory. Uh, this was great. I'd say for my post mood assessment, because like always, to be mindful, assess your mood before and during and after your media interactions to make them intentional, to make them you know mindful and purposeful, so that you're not just kind of what you might feel like wasting the hours away. Um, yeah, he was he was ready for me. He's like, whoa. Anyways, um, so, uh, post mood assessment, I think this was a win, again, everything I just said, it was, I feel stronger, I feel more capable, like I could come back to this game and have fun with it, um, you know, maybe even complete it, um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. If you have any other games that you'd like to see covered, the psychology of it, how we can benefit from it, even from a game you wouldn't expect, a game like Amnesia, a scary game you think that that was just for negative feelings, um, go ahead and please leave a suggestion. I'd love to hear them. And happy Halloween. Thank you so much for joining me for this Halloween episode. And as always, happy playing.